Okay, so welcome to the last uh, section of notes on momentum. Uh, we're just going to take the same topic we learned last day, which was uh, conservation momentum in one dimension, and we're just going to start to apply that now in two dimensions. So um, even if we have a two-dimensional situation, our same rules are going to apply. Uh, for example, in this example here, we have a Peugeot, uh, so a small car, traveling 21 meters per second west, colliding with another small car, a Fiat, which is traveling 18 meters per second south. If the two cars become entwined, which is to say they kind of stick together after the collision, what is their total final velocity? So um, I'm just going to map this out here. So I've got my Peugeot traveling west. Okay, so traveling west at 21 meters per second. And then that's going to collide with the Fiat, which is traveling at 18 meters per second to the south. Now you can imagine when these two cars collide and become entwined, the Fiat has, um, has momentum south, the Peugeot has momentum to the west. So the two when they stick together, they kind of kind of go off at an angle here. You can sort of visualize that happening. Um, and so the way we're going to find that is through a simple vector addition. I'm just going to think of uh, this as object 1 and object 2. And so I guess M1 is 680 kilograms and V1 is 18 meters per second. So momentum 1 would just be M1 V1 which is, oh, let's call it uh, 12,240 kilogram meters per second. Now it's worth noting that this, um, this car is traveling south and as vectors go, typically when we have something going south or going downwards, we think of the downwards direction as being negative. So my momentum in this case would be negative. It's in the negative y direction. Similarly, I can calculate the momentum for uh, uh, the second car here where M2 is 750 kilograms and V2 would be 21 meters per second. Again, recognizing that if this car is traveling west, we generally think of west or to the left as being negative or in the negative x direction. And so P2 initial would just be M2 V2, which works out to be about negative uh, 15,730 kilogram meters per second. So as we said before, um, our conservation momentum, which was basically saying that our initial momentum just has to equal our final momentum, um, these are vectors. When we were in one dimension, it was simple enough to just kind of add or subtract them together. When we're in two dimensions, we simply have to do a vector addition. So uh, remember with vector addition, it doesn't matter which order I go in. So I'll just start with momentum one. So momentum one goes this way. I'm gonna call that P1 initial because it's before the collision. And then I'm going to add to that momentum 2, which is in this direction. I'll call that P2 initial. And those two are going to add up to my total. So this represents the total momentum uh, of the system. Now recall that since momentum is conserved, the total momentum of the system, I could think of that as being the total initial momentum, like this car going south and this car going west separately. It, but I can also think of it as being the final momentum. And by that I mean this car stuck to that car and their total momentum kind of carrying them off in this southwest sort of direction. So uh, the only other thing to remember here is that because it's in two dimensions, we also have to consider um, this angle here because uh, that's going to give us our direction. So to solve for the total momentum, I can uh, simply use some Pythagoras. So P uh, total is just going to be the square root of P1 initial squared plus P2 initial squared. Um, and when I work the numbers in here, I get right around just under 20,000, so 19,947 kilogram meters per second. Note that in two dimensions, the fact that both of these vectors were negative, that they had negative values, when I square them here, I sort of lose that negative. We can't describe the direction with positive and negative in two dimensions, and that's why we need this angle right here. So I can solve for theta. Um, maybe I'll just use uh, tan. So theta is going to be inverse tan of um, P2 initial over P1 initial. And that works out to be about 52 degrees. Now don't forget that the actual problem was asking us for the total final velocity, not the momentum. And so I'm going to have to solve just saying P total is equal to M total V final. 
or V final is just the total momentum divided by the mass. And so dividing this number by the mass, it works out to be about 14 meters per second. And of course, the direction of the final velocity is the same as the direction of the momentum, which is 52 degrees. And if we want to get particular, we could call that west of south. So that's, um, that's, that's it in a nutshell. The only problem is that um, we're not always going to deal with situations where the collision or the two objects interact at right angles. So remember that um, if the momentum that is conserved, so we need to add the momenta and not the velocities. It would be a lot easier if we could just take the velocity of the Fiat and add it to the velocity of the Peugeot and then find the total. But that's kind of meaningless because remember that the mass of the two cars is obviously going to be a big deal. If this was a Peugeot hitting um, a, a train, that would be a completely different um, situation. So if we run into the scenario where we've got a collision or an interaction happening and it's not at 90 degrees, we've kind of got two options um, that we can um, do. We're either going to use something called the component method or the um, trig method. And we've seen this before and we're going to see it again. And just note that it doesn't really matter which way you use to solve it um, as long as you understand the, the um, method that you're using. So in this example, um, we've got uh, a bowling ball traveling to the east. And maybe I can think of this as being V1 initial. That's traveling at, um, I don't know, some velocity. And the mass is four kilograms. And it collides with a stationary frozen cantaloupe, which is uh, the kind of thing that happens all the time, I'm sure. And so this is uh, M2, and it's just sitting there, and it's 6.1 kilograms. It's a pretty hefty cantaloupe. Now, after the collision, you can imagine this kind of like if you've ever played pool. If one ball hits the other, but doesn't hit it dead on, if it hits it um, a little bit uh, off to the side, then what might happen is the bowling ball might end up kind of going off at an angle here. So afterwards, the bowling ball is kind of heading up this way at an angle, and it tells us it's an angle of 32 degrees north of east. And you could imagine what must be happening to the cantaloupe. In fact, it tells us, since the bowling ball is now kind of heading upwards, the cantaloupe must be heading kind of downwards off this way uh, at an angle of 41 degrees south of east. So like I said, there's two ways uh, to figure this out. What we're looking for here is what was the initial velocity of the bowling ball? How fast was the bowling ball moving? Note that we're given the final velocities here of each of the objects. So V1 final is 2.8 meters per second, and uh, V2 final is 1.5 meters per second. So like I said, there's two ways to do this. The first way is the component method. And this might take a few more steps, um, but it's a little bit uh, clearer, so we're going to go through it first. So the first thing to do is just break these two momenta uh, into their components, their x and y components. So if I think about this as being the bowling ball momentum 1 final, which is just m1 v1 final, when I multiply that together, I get 11.2 kilogram meters per second and it's traveling at an angle here of 32 degrees north of east. So I've just broken this down into components, which I would call this P1x and P1y. Now I can solve for each of these uh, by using sine and cosine. So P1y, you can see, is going to equal P1 final, or the total hypotenuse there, which is 11.2 times the sine of 32. So this gives me a value of about 5.935 kilogram meters per second. I can do the same thing here for P1x. This is going to be 11.2 times the cosine of 32. And that gives me a total of about 9.498 kilogram meters per second. I'm going to do the same exact thing here with my cantaloupe. So the cantaloupe went kind of down this way. This was uh, P2 final which equals M2 V2 final. And that works out to be about 9.15 kilogram meters per second. If I break it into its constituent X and Y components, I go as far to the uh, right as I can so that I can turn and go to this uh, to downwards at a right angle. And so I've got P1X, sorry, I've got P2X there, and this would be P2Y. Um, this is a 41 degree angle, 
So P2x is going to equal 9.15 times the cosine of 41, which gives me about 6.906 kilogram meters per second. And P2y is going to equal 9.15 times the sine of 41 degrees, which is 6.003 kilogram meters per second. Now it's worth uh, just pausing here for a quick second. Because you've just gone from two dimensions and now broken it down into x and y components, um, you need to remember that in the x and y plane, we can have positives and negatives. So it's a good idea to go back and check. For example, this P1y is upward, so that's positive. P1x is to the right, that's positive. P2x is to the right, that's positive. But lo and behold, P2y is in the downwards direction. So I should think of this as being negative six kilogram meters per second. All right, once I've broken it into components, now I just need to add up the total individuals. So I'm gonna add up all of the X components, and I'm gonna add up all the Y components, and I'm gonna see what I get. So P1X plus P2X was 9.498 plus 6.906, so that gives me right around 16.4. Uh, kilogram meters per second and doing the same thing in the uh, y direction I've got 5.935 plus negative 6.003 now this gives me negative 0 0.068 kilogram meters per second now if we take a look at this if we take a close look negative 0 0.068 kilogram meters per second that seems like a really small number and in actual fact, that number is basically approximately zero. Why is the total Y momentum so small? If we go back and look at the original problem, before the collision happened, <clears throat> the bowling ball was heading directly to the east. The cantaloupe was stationary. So all the momentum in the system was to the right or in the X direction. After the collision, the fact that the bowling ball goes up and the cantaloupe goes down doesn't mean we've all of a sudden created Y momentum. It just means that whatever Y momentum was gained by the bowling ball upwards, an equal and opposite amount was gained by the cantaloupe going downwards. So essentially, we shouldn't be surprised that those two, um, that those two vectors cancel out. And in fact, they very nearly do. The fact that it's not exactly zero is just a matter of um, carrying errors through sig figs. So notice that all the momentum is in the X direction. And this is not a surprise because this is how the problem started. So we know in this case that our total momentum, our total initial, P initial, is really just equal to the Px, which is 16.4 kilogram meters per second. Um, I, of course, I want velocity. So velocity is going to equal momentum over mass. So 16.4 divided by uh, 4 gives me about 4.1 meters per second and you can specify of course it's to the east because that's the way it was going so we're going to do this exact same problem we're just going to solve it now a slightly different way which is the vector addition method now this is a little bit more direct but you have to be kind of careful how you do it or it's easy to get um, a little bit tripped up so with vector addition basically we're just going to go ahead and add the two vectors the fact that it's not going to make a right angle triangle is not going to scare us because we've got sine law or cosine law if we need it and we're just going to go ahead and just kind of just going to chug through the calculations and, and make it work okay so notice that the total momentum is either the initial or the final because the total momentum is conserved so when we're, <clears throat> when we're adding these up, if we find the total momentum, we can think of that as total initial or total final. Those two things are the same thing. If I take P1 final, which I know that's 11.2 kilogram meters per second, and if I then add to that P2 final, which is 9.15 kilogram meters per second, this has to add up to be the total. And so essentially what we've just done is we've said P total is going to equal P1 final plus P2 final. But of course, we've done this as a vector addition. We've just done it in two dimensions. Like I was saying, this P total, this is the final, the total final momentum. But that is the same as the total initial momentum. So this will allow me to find the initial velocity of that bowling ball uh, pre-collision. 
The one trick we've got to be aware of here is, is making sure we get our angles straight. We know that this vector is directly to the east because um, the bowling ball was heading directly to the east to start off with. So I know that this angle here makes a 32 degree angle because it was north of east. However, this uh, green vector here, I can reason out that from this point here, it was heading 41 degrees south of east. And by using my um, Z rule, I can see that this is also 41 degrees. Since all the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180, then I know that this angle here is 107. So um, now that I've done that, I just need to use, like I said, sine law or cosine law to figure out um, whatever is missing. Um, as it happens, I've got all three angles plus two of the sides, so I could really do it any way I want. To me, sine law is a little bit simpler, so I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to say that P uh, total divided by the sine of 107 is equal to P1 divided by the sine of 41. So solving for P uh, total, that's just going to equal P1 times the sine of 107 over the sine of 41, which works out to be right around 16.33 kilogram meters per second. Now again, a reminder that we want to find the velocity. So the velocity is just equal to the momentum divided by the mass, or 16.33 divided by 4.0, which to two sig figs gives me 4.1 meters per second. And again, we know that was headed to the east. All right, that's it for um, the last lesson on momentum.